Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a lead technical advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. Hey, everyone. I'm Matt DiNapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 95 of Snack Minute. Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute bite of learning covering tech, coding, and some cool stuff we like to work on. And the thing that we're going to talk to you about today is Jinja2 templating with my colleague, Jason Belk. Hi, I'm Jason Belk. I'm a senior technical advocate here in the learning and certifications organization, and I'm really excited to be sharing all the stuff I've learned and hopefully help people along the way. Maybe you can just give us a quick, like, explaining to me like I'm five. What is Jinja2 template in general? Sure. Uh, so one of the core things when people are getting started in network engineering is they want to automate their configuration management. And so for those who are network engineers, they know that we have these text files that are running on each of our network devices, whether those are routers, switches, or firewalls. And within those text files, we have the configurations. We have our interfaces, we have our access lists, and all the other stuff in between. Gender 2 templates were used within web programming to render websites. So when you see HTML and different things like that, Gender 2 templates were used to, to render all that fancy stuff behind the scenes. But network engineers and other people have used it as a powerful templating language because it both is Python based and there's a lot of industry support behind it to render configuration for their network devices. And so basically behind the scenes, what you're doing is you're taking your configuration text and then plugging in particular values on the spots that you want to fill in, whether that's the interface name, IP addresses, descriptions, or, or other parts of the configuration that you're working with. And one of the reasons network engineers like working with it is because you can take your existing configuration and with just a little bit of manipulation, start plugging in values. But I've found in my experience, and especially when I was getting started, it can be a little confusing to know where to get started. There's all the, you know, the world is, is, is your oyster, so to speak. And, and for network engineers, it, it can be like, where do I even get started? How, I'm confused. What's YAML? What's Jinja2? What's going on here? And so what I'm hoping to take is basically to take some, some simple examples give some methodologies so that you can get started in templating yourself. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, so I, I'm excited because um, I, I presume we're going to see a demo. And as we all know, uh, creams of my favorite thing are demos. <laughs> and so uh, why don't you hop right into it and, and show us what you got to show us today? Sure. So what I'm using today is called J2 Live. So a gentleman named Pramit Ragala or TTL255 on Twitter has created this online live tool that you can use. You don't even need Ansible, you don't need Python, you don't need anything set up otherwise. You can just use this website, which is why I, I really like doing it. Because I, I feel like people who are getting started in, in network automation, you're, you're trying to juggle so many different things at once. <laughs> you're learning new syntax, you're learning where things go in files and you know all, all these different components, making sure dependencies are correct. And for me, sometimes I just want to learn my basics. I want to get those reps in so I understand what's going on before I start adding any complexity. So what we have here is a website that basically allows a couple of different text fields. We have two on the left. The top part is where we're going to put our configuration. So for example, we can put in some simple SNMP configuration. And then on the, on the bottom part, we would plug in our YAML or JSON variables that would feed into the template. And for a Gen2 template, you can actually just render it without any particular inputs. And it will obviously just render exactly what you have on the left. And the nice thing about what, what um, has been created in this tutorial is, is basically you can turn on white spaces so you can see, because I know on some network devices, they're very sensitive to white spaces. <laughs> for people who have worked with that, there's different options for um, JJ2, LSTRIP, trim, rendering mode. That I'm not gonna go into this demo, but it's good to know that that's available to you. So what we have here on a JJ2 template, the first thing I'd say is that we're gonna use SNMP configuration because for a network engineer, it's something that almost everybody has to work with. You have to monitor your devices. You have to be looking at what's going on. And it's something you're going to want to scale out across your entire network and be consistent. And also, if you happen to break it, mess it up, oops, monitoring is, is broken for about two minutes. And then, you know, you're able to plug it back out versus, you know, if, if you're working on the BTY lines or some way of accessing the device or security, you don't want to be messing around that with your initial testing and configuration, which hopefully is being done in the lab. But I know that's not always realistic in every environment. And so for Jinja2 templating, basically what you do is you plug in variables for the particular parts of the configuration that change. And so for you as a network engineer, you can think about your configuration. Where are the parts that I, I hit the question mark? Where are the parts of the configuration that I'm actually having to feed in the components? Because I know when I was getting started, 
You're like, what, what parts am I actually working with when I'm templating out something? That's really the core part is thinking about which parts change, which parts stay the same. And you can see I copy and paste it to say we have maybe a couple of variables in our SNMP server community, contact and location. And I just name them variable one, two, three, and four. But the Gen2 syntax is basically using these curly brackets and then the name of the variable. And within those curly brackets is where it's going to plug in the data that we're going to work with. And the way most um, Gen2 works is you're going to have either JSON or YAML data. And so on the bottom here, we have some YAML data for the variable names that I've plugged on top. So we have community, community string is going to get plugged into community string. SNMP right flag is going to be RO and admin and HQ are going to be plugged in for admin and location. So the, the great thing about Gen2 is that you can basically take your existing configuration, rip out the components that you know you want to be plugging in your variables, and start very simply with maybe just a flat data model. And this is one part that we're going to talk about a little bit later is that when you're building a data model, there's a lot of flexibility in what, in what you can do. I can name these variables basically whatever I want. Um, but you know, you want to pick something that is understandable and ho hopefully not a, a, a variable that you're going to be using la later for something else. And when you click render, you can see then the variables are then plugged in. So testing string is plugged in to testing string on the top right here. And I can turn off the white spaces so you can see it a little more cleanly and then turn back on. So, so basically at a high level, what we're working with here is we're taking configuration and then we're, we're decomposing it. We're thinking about what are the parts of it that I need to plug in values. So I, when I'm doing this first, I start with the configuration first and then I start ripping out value by value, the parts that I think I want to plug in values. And then I start building my data model, building those variable names that make sense. And, and then I usually use something like this where I can start plugging in to make sure that it's rendering correctly, that there's no weird spacing, that I've spelled my variable names correctly, little details like that go a long ways before you can start working your Ansible playbooks or whatever more near thing you're, you're working with. Because you could have an issue very simply at the start here that later on would cause issues that you, you wouldn't discover until you ran your playbook. Yeah, and you don't want to find that out when you hit run, right? <laughs> <laughs> A, a little more complicated example that I, I wanted to go through, and because basically what I'm trying to go through here is um, taking components of, of what we're working with on the configuration and then building upon it. So people, when they're getting started looking at configuration, can say, how, how can I decompose this myself? So if you think about, say, interfaces, we have a series of, of loop, loopbacks, and we could think, okay, we have interface, interfa the inter name of the interface, the description with the IP address, subnet mask, and maybe shut or no shut. And so within that particular series, we can see a little bit of a pattern. So instead of typing out all the interfaces, which in this case, we're going from 200 to 204, we can actually abstract it a little bit and then turn that into a Jinja2 loop. So we can say for each interface in my list of interfaces, I want to have a name, I want to have a description, I want to have an IP address, and I want to have a subnet. And then all those we can then you know, put within a larger object that I'm going to make a list of dictionaries. And whether you do a list of dictionaries or a dictionary of dictionaries as a nested object is completely up to you, but um, it changes the way you're going to model your, your information on the G2 template. So on the left here, we have done with a, a list of dictionaries. So we have list items indicated by the YAML hyphen, and we have the dictionary key and value pairs of name, description, IP, and for address. So basically what's going to happen here is the Jinja2 loop is going to loop over each of these list items and then plug in the values of the name, description, and, and IP address into our interface and then render that into a list of interfaces. In our, in our previous example, relatively simple that we're matching it up, but, but what we're doing here is we are validating that our expectation for um, generating what the, what, the, what the configuration that's being pushed to the device is going to be correct. Um, whether yeah. we use a for loop, and I know that there's within Jinja 2 the ability to do conditionals <laughs> as well. And so yeah. it's just click for me. I just realized, okay, we're yep. what I, I got it. <laughs> I think for yep. me, when I was looking yep. at this is all I was thinking about is essentially, if you think about it from an API perspective, this is what Postman does for your API. When you're going out to test out the API before you actually go in and code it, this is the equivalent of Postman for Jinja 2 templating. Yeah, you can, fo you can focus on, because this is a whole series of complexity on its own, trying to match, you know, your, your the looping and, and all these nested objects, especially when you get into more complex config. And that's why I started with a simple example, kind of crawl, walk, run, and, and in the sense that 
first you want to make sure you have the basics to understand. Okay, what are the syntax? How does YAML work? How does Nginx2 work? Okay, now let's introduce a little bit of complexity of oh, let's loop over an interface. And I'm picking interfaces also as particularly loopbacks because I know that's something that if it breaks, it's not it's not going to mess up the whole network. And one other thing I wanted to show is you can start adding some resiliency, I'll say, into your configuration where you can put within your, um, as Matt was saying, you can put some conditional. So, so we can start checking for variables if they're present, if they're defined within our JG2 templates. So we can say we're still looping over our interfaces, so we're adding another layer of complexity with that same configuration template. So now we're saying basically if the description is defined, then plug in the description. If the IP address is defined and subnet is defined, then plug in that configuration. So if I just start with this one, I think somebody who hadn't seen this before would just be like, whoa, this is getting way out of control. But hopefully now we can see that it's possible when you're building these Gen2 templates that someone may or may not want all of those components present. And so then we can say within our list of dictionaries, we have maybe no description on loopback 200. Maybe we have no IP address on loopback 201. You can see on the data is now a little bit different. And when I render the template, it's going to have that reflected in the configuration that we're building. So it's not completely uniform. It's based on how the data is designed to be fed into the template. It gives us the power of, of um, what a traditional uh, programming language would provide for us, which is the ability to loop over items and provide conditionals. I mean, this, this is a, a fantastic opportunity within, um, within Ansible, uh, mainly, uh, to, to have that power in play. Imagine, imagine uh, attaching this to Quinn's episode on states and tagging, and having it run this way. Yeah, that's uh, exactly that's, what I was thinking. And that's that's pretty powerful. Before we let you go, Jason, I have a question. What happens sure. if you if you introduce an error in this? Since you're super perfect with uh, all of your examples, <laughs> were 100 percent correct. Um, so say so, yeah, let's let's change one of the variable names here, and maybe one of the variable names here will misspell it because sometimes we all make mistakes, and you'll see it, it it kind of fails behind the scenes on what's going on here, and that's just the way Jinja two works is that basically if it, if it doesn't see a particular variable present, it just doesn't render that configuration because we're, we're gonna have that we're gonna have the if statement not be defined, and so when that variable is not defined, then it's not going to render that component correctly. Um, so. I'd say error handling is definitely one of the more difficult parts of Jinja 2 because it, it's not a full programming language. You know, you're, you're working with a lot of Python abstractions here behind the scenes. And I'd say that another thing that um, Jinja 2 does not do so well is data model validation. So you, you can do things called filters, which basically would make sure things are actually an IP address. You know, somebody didn't mistype and put two periods or something. Because it's just looking for strings at this point. So those are other components that as you get farther along your journey, you're going to start doing other components like input validation, you know, make, making sure that some kind of, I would say, idiot proofing your code to a certain extent, because we all make mistakes. Well, uh, Jason, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week. Thank you so much for showing us this excellent tool. Um, Snackers, check out uh, last week's episode around um, tagging within Ansible and apply it to uh, your Jinja 2 templating. Those kind of go hand in hand really nicely. Um, and come back next week uh, for our next exciting episode of Snack Minute. Thanks, Jason. Thanks. Thank you, Staggers. <laughs>